This is Ben from Life in 360 and in this video I'm going to show you how to shoot 360 panoramas using your DJI Mavic and the Litchi app. So in the early days of shooting panoramas, photographers would stitch together a bunch of high-res DSLR photos into one panoramic shot which allows you to then scroll around it later and you get heaps and heaps of resolution. You can now do that using a drone and right now I've got the DJI Mavic. I just got in the, the mail from gearbest.com and I'm going to give you guys a special link to where you can get these really cheap at the end of the video. And I'm going to put this up in the air and do the same thing. I'm going to take 34 photos which then I'm going to stitch together into an ultra high res panorama and it's actually very easy all you need is a Mavic and the Litchi app which I've downloaded in the app stores for both Apple and Android. So this app is super cool because it actually takes control of the Mavic's little camera and it's going to take 34 shots for us in every direction in a way that they will be stitchable later on. So it'll go like this bip 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 and then it'll turn bip 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 so we get the full 360. Unfortunately, it doesn't get above the drone, obviously because the propellers are there. So you will want to get up high enough that all the details are below you and the, the sky above is kind of less important. I'm shooting for tiny planet purposes. I want to turn this into a really high res tiny planet, but essentially if you want the sky, you're probably going to have to patch it in later in Photoshop or another program. But so this essentially captures the majority of the landscape, just not above the drone. But still, this is pretty cool given you, you don't actually need a 360 camera to take a 360 photo. So let's give it a go. Take off. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Wow, look at it. Look at it go. It's flying, it's like a UFO. Oh my god, I'm doing it. I didn't crash it yet. Crash it, didn't crash it. Oh, oh, I didn't crash it. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. gives you the full controls of operating the drone within the Litchi app. So what we're going to do is bring the drone into the sky and then we're going to change into pano mode. It's probably not the best day today because as you can see the drone's shaking a bit. So I'm going to try and find a less windy spot because it's crucial that you have your drone in a spot that it's not going to shake because when it's taking the, when it's taking the panos, it's going to need to be able to stitch them together cleanly. So the drone essentially can't move within about a meter or so of where it's going to be hovering. Let's go. So we have our drone hovering over the spot we want to shoot and luckily the wind has calmed down. So now I'm going to go into pano mode, which is in the top left. You change from FPV to pano and we can see our panorama settings. We want four rows. Top row angle 15 degrees, photos per row 8, and we just hit start, 34 photos. And now it's going to automatically take photos for us in every direction. As you can see, it's moving the field of view, so it captures every piece of the jigsaw puzzle of this landscape. It's doing it one at a time until we get to 34. This is absolutely incredible because the drone is fighting the wind while it's taking these panos, yet on this screen here, it's staying dead still. It doesn't look like there's anything going on, yet I can see the drone, it's on almost a, a 45 degree angle. So this is actually incredible, this piece of technology, and hopefully it's not too much of an issue with the stitching, we will find out later. Ideally, you do want to go out on a still day, but this is 
the conditions that Mother Nature has given us, so we'll just have to deal with it for now. And as you can see down here, we're 19 photos in of 34, and it's done roughly a 180 degree part of our full 360. Okay, our pano has finished, and I'm going to send it back to home now. Okay, I think that turned out pretty well. Now let's head over to the edit suite and stitch these bad boys together. Okay, now have a look at these photos. They are looking excellent. Here we have all the pieces of the puzzle of our landscape that we just shot. And each individual photo is 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. Look at that. And there are 34 of these things. So can you see the value in trying something like this to get that extra resolution? Because roughly one photo is the same size as what a 360 camera could deliver. So I can't wait to see the crazy high resolution we'll get. In terms of stitching these things, there are heaps of options for stitching programs. From my research so far, consistently I'm seeing that PT GUI is the best option for stitching. It is a paid app. They do have a free version as well, and there are also other apps you can use. There's a free one called Huggin. Um, I found that to be okay, but I've had a lot of issues with it. Um, and there are many others for both Windows and Mac. So you will want to check them out. Now I want to throw it over to Joel from Lil Planets. You might have seen him on Instagram. He's extremely experienced with stitching drone panoramas, and he's going to show you exactly how to stitch your 360 panorama shot from your Mavic using the PT GUI app and this guy has done thousands of them. He's made every mistake in the book so his expertise is a thousand times better than mine. So therefore without further ado, over to you Joel. Hey thanks Ben. So today I'm going to show you guys how to take the photos from Ben's Mavic Pro and turn that into a full 360 image using a variety of software including PT GUI, Photoshop and Lightroom. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and select my images and pull those into Lightroom. And once they have loaded into Lightroom, I'm going to go ahead and import them. Once the images have finished importing, I'm going to select one image that has a good amount of sky and a good amount of land. Then I'm going to adjust the settings on that image to my liking. All right, now that I have the settings I like, I'm going to select all the images and copy all the settings to the rest of the images. You'll see here now I have a consistent set of images and now I'm going to export them all into JPEGs into a new folder. I'm going to label Photos for Stitching. All right, go ahead and export. Once those have finished exporting, I'm going to pull the new set of images into PT GUI. I will then click the Align Settings or Align Images button, and I'll go ahead and let PT GUI stitch the images together based off of the lens data from the camera. All right, now you'll see a preview of the full 360 panorama. That actually looks pretty good so far. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it into Little Planet mode and you'll see a tiny planet version of the drone images. So now I'm going to go ahead and export this JPEG so we can pull it into Photoshop to inspect the level or the, the image at a detail level. Um, that way we can see if there's any stitching errors or anything wrong with the image. All right, I'm going to zoom in and see if there's any stitching errors. Uh, it looks like there is something here by Ben Shadow. So I'll go ahead and mark that for later. All right. And it looks like we got one here as well. And we got one right here at the top. And looks like we got one here on the left as well. So I'm actually now going to go back to PT GUI. And I'm going to use the masking tool that they have to mask out some of the areas that didn't stitch together properly. So we got this one by Ben Shadow. And we got this other one that was on the left side of the image, or the, the, the right side of the image. All right, we'll go ahead and export a new JPEG with these adjustments. Once that is finished saving, we're going to go ahead and pull this new image back into Photoshop, and we're going to inspect it uh, at a detailed level. So it looks like the shadow uh, on where Ben was is fixed. It looks like this area still needs some work. 
uh, the issue at the top here was fixed. Let's check the right side of the image. And let's see, uh, it looks like there's still a little error here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this area in Photoshop. And I'm going to use the free transform tool to have the horizon lines meet together. And then I'm going to use the clone tool to smooth out the scene. So I'm actually going to go ahead and select this area to keep uh, my clone work area nice and clean. All right, so I'm going to fix the water right here, kind of blend that together with the, with the clone tool. And then I'll go into the tree area and kind of mend those together so you can't see uh, where the air was. And then lastly, I'll go ahead and fix uh, where the clouds are. All right, that looks pretty good. So we'll move on to the other stitching area that didn't get fixed. And we'll do a similar thing. We'll just uh, select it out. Then we'll use the free transform to have the horizon lines meet. And then we'll use the clone tool again to smooth out uh, the seam. All right. Fix the land area there. And then we'll go down to the water area, smooth that out. And then the little marsh area. All right, that's looking pretty good. And I'm actually going to get rid of this tree so you can't see where I cloned the land area here. And that looks pretty seamless. So we'll go ahead and zoom out, view our, our whole image here. And you'll notice we have this kind of black area around. We'll want to crop that out, so we'll go ahead and do that right now. All right, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and save that. Might take a second since it is a very large image. All right, and the last thing I'm going to do is just add uh, a curves adjustment, which where we can uh, adjust the contrast, uh, get that exposure dialed in exactly the way we want it. And then also I'm going to use the selective color tool to darken the sky and the water a little bit uh, to make the image pop. And then lastly, I'll just add a little bit of saturation because it's always nice to have those colors be a little bit more bold. And uh, there you have it. That's our finished tiny planet image from uh, Ben's Mavic drone uh, shots. And I'm going to go ahead and send this image back over to Ben, and I'll let him finish out the video. Thanks. And here we have the final image, and look at that resolution. Oh my god. I have never ever taken a 360 or a tiny planet with this much resolution ever. And guess what? It wasn't even taken with a 360 camera. Can you believe that? Thank you so much, Joel, for your expertise. I am addicted to this style already. I can't wait to just shoot the crap out of every landscape I visit from now on, knowing I can get that much resolution. Honestly, when you use a 360 camera and you stretch it around into a tiny planet, you lose a lot of resolution. It looks great on Instagram, but for anything more, it's not enough resolution. So this is an excellent solution for people who are looking to print out their work or want to display it on high-res screens, anything beyond Instagram, and you want to consider something like this. Okay, here comes something exciting. Because GearBest.com like me a lot, they agreed to give my followers only a special discount on brand new DJI Mavics, like seriously cheap. I would say this is the cheapest on the internet, so take advantage of it if you don't have a Mavic yet. They're going to offer you guys the Mavic Fly More Kit for only $1,131 and I haven't seen it that cheap on the entire internet so take advantage of it follow the link in the description and enter the coupon code and that is yours if you want just the Mavic Pro drone you can get that as well they're going to discount it for you guys down to $915 that is excellent however I would recommend the fly more kit it just means you get more batteries more accessories and you'll have a smoother time while you're actually shooting I'll put a coupon code for both of these deals down in the description so definitely click the link and check them out if you're looking to add a Mavic to your 360 shooting kit. By the way here's a sneak peek and my next drone video. If you want to see it you should definitely hit that subscribe button. Who knows what's going to happen? Will I crash the drone into that lagoon behind me? There's a very very strong chance that could happen so stay tuned for that and I'll talk to you guys soon.